Hello everybody and welcome back to the United Stand. We needed this this morning. It's Eric Ten Hag and an interview that's been released ahead of the tour for Manchester United. He's been speaking. We've not heard from Eric Ten Hag for a few weeks now. And it's actually very positive to get some words from the manager who is actually the big positive about Manchester United this summer in a lack of positive. So great to hear from Eric Ten Hag. And I want to hit it sort of straight on here and just whack up a, something I summarised because this is the biggest thing for me. He was asked about what his principles are for Manchester United and personal. And he said that to play proactive style of football on and off the ball um, in every situation, be proactive, proactive, um, brave, willing to have the ball. And I think that we, we mustn't forget this. I think there's a lot to be concerned about the Ronaldo situation, De Jong, lack of signings, etc. But there's some really good bits of information we're going to go through now with you. But this is really important. This is the thing that makes me excited to watch the preseason, makes me excited to watch the games next year. There's a distinct lack of quality in that squad. Absolutely. He can't work miracles. You know, you cannot polish a turd. I've said it so many times. But there will be a big improvement. I see United fans saying we're going to finish mid-table, we're going to be fighting for relegation because last year we were terrible. But we have now got a coach that plays a brand of football that will get the fans off their, off their seat. We have now got a coach that will play proactive football. Yes, those players aren't good enough, but I don't think we'll have as bad a season as last year because last year we played a bad style of football with players that couldn't be asked. This year, those players will try more and we, we, we will be coached better. So I do think it's very important to remember the principles that Eric Ten Hag is going to bring to Manchester United. Um, he also spoke about his coaching style. I think this is important to bring up on the screen as well. So he was asked about um, you know his actual coach, coaching style and he said, um, in position of individuals, you give them coaching advice and in the end, it's about team results and better team performance. So you give them advice to perform into the team um, and what he was talking about there is essentially the the need to um, you know he was basically being asked about how he coaches as a manager and how he's you know we have these clips on the training ground and it's like look everyone's got their different style that's effectively what he was saying but we have the principles that we will say at the start of the training session. These are the principles for the next few weeks for my time in the club. But then when I'm also training, it's my go my job to give coaching advice. And that's probably not what we've seen as much from Mourinho, certainly from Solskjaer. But you will see from Ten Hag. You will see from Pep Guardiola. You will see from Jurgen Klopp. You will see it from Thomas Tuchel. It's the modern coach. Yes, this is what we're trying to achieve in this training session and we're trying to achieve these principles for the season ahead. But Ten Hag within a training session will go and speak to a player individually and give them coaching advice that will help them better adapt to the principles. So it's a new thing for us as fans to observe, but it's not actually a new thing to a, uh, for, for a modern coach to do. Um, and then he, he expanded on that and said that, look, it's my job to construct a team and to improve the team. You can't do it. You can do it in different ways in, or in more ways. But to start out, it's a, it is out of a philosophy and then you build it and go into individuals and you give them the rules and the principles, which is exactly what we were just talking about there. You know, you have your principles, you have your philosophy. And then when, build, when building that philosophy, you've got to tailor it to individuals. Some people will pick up on it straight away. Some players will, for example, when you're doing one of these passing exercises and, and you're saying this is going to work in a team environment because we're going to move the ball between opposition quicker and more efficiently, when you're going through those principles before a training session or in a room with a big screen, players are nodding their heads. And then you go on a training ground and you know seven or eight of the players have got it, but two or three of the players haven't. Do you let that training session run through to the next time you sit them all down and say, look, McTominay, Bruno, you got it wrong? Or in the training session, do you go to the individual and say, look, this is what I want you to do? And, and that's hands-on coaching. And that's what the exciting thing is about Eric Ten Hag. That's the attention to detail. That's the obsessive nature of this coach we're bringing in. It doesn't mean it's going to work, but it's certainly a massive step forward from where we were before. Um, he was asked about the tour, and he was asked about what he thinks that uh, that that will that will what, what what he thinks he will get out of this tour over the next uh, next two weeks. Um, he says, "I want energy in my team, and I want energy of playing together." And um, you know, I've only just started. The internationals only started last Monday. I've got to learn about my squad and two weeks together is a great opportunity for me to learn, but for us all to learn together, for them to learn about me and my coaches and me to learn about them. 
look, that's a, that's the right answer from Eric Ten Hag. Um, I think that you know he's he, he's not wrong to say that at all. But obviously, the the, the kicker for that, and it's not his fault at all. Um, the kicker for that is that he is a manager that doesn't have any new signings apart from um, Malasia, who he speaks about in a minute. So it's. You know he's right. It's a great opportunity to learn about the players. It's just a real shame he hasn't got four or five extra players and Ronaldo because those four or five extra players and Ronaldo would be a key part of his first team that he doesn't have on tour. That's not his fault. Um, he was asked about um, Steve McLaren. Um, Steve McLaren's obviously been brought in, and um, I can put the quote up on the screen. You can read it as we're going along. But he basically said about McLaren, of course, I wanted him because of his experience in relation to the club and that he's a good coach. He's familiar. He knows the clubs and he knows the culture at Manchester United so that was obviously a positive as well um, and he was also asked about M M Mitchell van der Geek, who is his assistant coach he said um, gained a lot of experience and most important for these two including van der Geek and McLaren is they know how to win because they've proved it in the past he also said that uh, van der Geek has got great experience as a player but also across Europe um, he was asked about the current staff, which I think is our first glimpse, a question I haven't, I've always wanted answering. What is the situation with the current staff? Um, there's a lot of current staff staying behind working. Um, I don't think Eric Ten Hag has brought that many people with him. I mean, nobody at United or the media have ever wanted to expose this. And I don't know why. Because when we brought Ralph Ranyuk in, there was an obsession about how many coaches he was going to bring in with him. And I think he brought two. I don't know how many um, Eric Ten Hag's brought with him. I don't know if he's brought anybody else apart from Van der Geek and McLaren. Um, you know, my expectation was that he was going to bring a whole raft of people with him. You know, if you think about how many people he had working with him at Ajax, 10, 20, 30 people, I thought we'd see a complete clear out of staff. Actually, and look, I'm, I'm completely speculating here. I think it's just Ten Hag, McLaren and Van der Geek work with the coaches that worked with Oli, that worked with Mourinho, that worked with... Um, Ranić, which is not again, it's not new, is it? Is it's just papering the cracks? Like, why is there not a complete rehash of our staff and coaches? It doesn't feel like there is. And he went on to say, look, um, and he didn't speak massively positive about them. He just said they've been a big help. Um, they're really dedicated, experienced, and knowledgeable. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I can't comment on that. But it just sounds weird to me that a new manager just brings an assistant coach and Steve McLaren, like. He should have people that he knows can do drills. You know, 10, 20 people should be coming with Eric Ten Hag. Like, when you bring a new manager in, they should be bringing in the whole coaching network. And I don't know whether that's happened. I don't know. It doesn't sound like it has. And again, as with many things at United, you have a lot of journalism around United. You have a lot of voices around United. But it's almost like there's certain things we're not allowed to talk about. And as fans, we get left in the dark again. Like, is he literally using all of Ollie's coaches then, apart from Van der Gate? I don't know. I don't know. Um, he then went on to speak about Malasia, um, who is his first new signing and his only signing at the moment. So I think it's um, you know it, it, it's important to see what he said. He said um, he can also take part in the offensive side. Um, I think he's a modern left back who. Um, Suits the profile of the modern game. Um, he closes the wide area and he attacks well as well. And then it also he was asked about whether he's settling in and how he's finding it in Manchester. Has he been approached by any fans? He said, look, the fans are really committed. Um, they're ready for the fight, which is good to see. So, look, it's. Um, I think there's another part of this coming out tomorrow, which we can react to. Um, I mean, it, it, it's by MUTV. I mean, the press conference on Monday where he's actually asked questions by... Um, journalists and I, I'm hoping that Adam and Ryan from the United Stand are going to be in that press conference as well we might even get to ask a question I don't know but he will certainly get asked better questions than MUTV because MUTV don't want to put him on the spot we want him to be put on the spot in relation to um, certain questions you know Ronaldo um, the transfer situation but Eric Ten Hag is the positive at Manchester United at the moment as, as I said at the start of the video and there's some nice bits there, and I think the big thing for me, and I'll just whack it back up on the screen there, is the most important takeaway, and if you didn't know it already, is that these are the principles of Eric Ten Hag, to play proactive style of football, on and off the ball, in every situation be proactive, be brave and want the ball. And if we do those things, and he can get half of our team to do those things, 
we will be a better side to watch next season. I'm not saying we're going to finish in the top four, but step one is probably to play better football. Step one is to have an identity. And I think Eric Ten Hag brings an identity to Manchester United. And if you're honest with yourself, our identity over the last nine years has predominantly been park the bus and hit on the brake and, and rely on moments. But well, we're not going to do that anymore if Ten Hag gets his way. So, look, a nice bit of positivity there. Smash a like on the video for some positivity. Eric Ten Hag, the man who is the only bit of positive this summer, who all our hopes, hopes, that word again, lie upon. He's got a miracle to work, but I like, I like his chat, I like his principles, and uh, let's hope we can start to see some of those over the coming weeks and months. Thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you smash a like on the uh, on the video for Eric. And uh, if you want to get one of these, by the way, uh, they are for sale now in our uh, United Stands Shopify shop. I'll drop the link in the description or just type United Stands Shopify on onto Google. Please do subscribe as well. I'll speak to you all in a bit.